Hello, my friends, and welcome to Genealogy Gems podcast episode number 251. If you're looking for a wide array of free online genealogical records for your family history, look no further than the Allen County Public Library's Genealogy Center in Fort Wayne, Indiana. You know, this is the second largest genealogy library in the world next to the Family History Library in Salt Lake City. And in addition to the in-house collection, the Genealogy Center offers a vast amount of free digitized resources through their website and partnerships with other websites. These days, we've been doing more research than ever online, so I have invited Allison Singleton to the show. She is the senior librarian at the Allen County Public Library Genealogy Center, and she's going to take us on a tour of the website, and she's going to share her tips and strategies for finding those genealogy gems. This interview comes from episode 31 of Elevens is with Lisa. Now that's our show on YouTube. You can find the Genealogy Gems channel at youtube.com slash genealogy gems. But here on the podcast, you can take the audio with you. And I think there's a lot to learn about how to get the most out of their wonderful, wonderful website. So without further ado, Let's jump into our conversation with Allison Singleton of the Genealogy Center. You know, I was telling the folks that you guys have this, I think it's, am I correct, the second largest genealogy library in the country? You are correct. Yeah. So give them a sense of who you are, where you guys are physically. How does the second largest genealogy library and center in the United States pop out of a public library in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And what's a little bit of the history behind who you guys are? Sure, of course. So let me start with the founding. Um, So basically, we had a director, a director of the library who was a bit eccentric, um, Fred Reynolds. And he saw that genealogists were not being served as well in many other libraries across the country. And I'm sure as researchers, you have come across a few, which is unfortunate because as a librarian, I wanna see everybody served equally. Um, But Fred Reynolds decided there and then that he wanted to build a collection to invite genealogists to come and research at the Allen County Public Library. And from there, it's grown quite a bit. Um, And currently we're under the direction of Kurt Witcher. He is the director of special collections and the genealogy center. So he has continued to lead us into the future and continued to help us grow. Um, Currently we have 42,000 square feet of materials. Yeah. So there's a lot. We focus on North America, but we also have other countries as well. Um, Within that North America, we do have the largest collection of Canadian records outside of Canada. And then other international records that are of note, we do have a pretty large United Kingdom collection. And then we have the largest collection of South African materials out of South Africa. Wow. I told everybody here who, because we have a, definitely a worldwide audience and we have a lot of Canadians. I know they'll be very excited about that. So it's a great reminder that every library, every archive is not necessarily only centered on the place where they are, their physical location. Oh, yeah. It's very interesting. We get phone calls and people are like, do you have things for other states? And I'm like, oh, yes, we do. What, what do you want? <laughs> We yeah. have something for every single state and then some. <laughs> Absolutely. And of course, Kurt Witcher has been a, a guest on the Genealogy Gems podcast. And I think my, my old family history podcast, one of my favorite people. So say hi to, to Kurt for me. Um, I would love to have you take us on a tour. A lot of folks are excited to use your website from home. And they're definitely passionate about genealogy. So how about take us on a tour? Let's talk about the best practices to get the most out of the website. Wonderful. I am happy to share. Our new website, it's brand new. It just launched in August. So <laughs> we're, wow. we're in a pandemic and we're launching websites. <laughs> um, so at the top, it looks like there's a, another web address, but if you still go to genealogycenter.org, it takes you to the correct location. So I highly recommend keeping genealogycenter.org firmly in your brain because Excellent. that is how you got here. 
Once you're here, there's a lot of different options and you can scroll down and see what's going on. A couple things uh, to note is we do have a genealogy community, so you can see where you can ask us questions. Um, we have a e-newsletter that might sound a little familiar. It does. <laughs> Um, and then we're very active on social media. So please feel free to contact us and especially during um, the month of October and during other periods of the year when there's special events, we are super active on Facebook. So keep an eye out on Facebook. Uh, we also have Pathfinders. So this I find to be really helpful if somebody is going, well, what do you have on this state? Well, we can click on the state pathfinders and pick a state. So let's go to Massachusetts just for fun. So Allison, should we think of pathfinders as you're kind of saying here, if you have a path you want to follow to get to a certain area of research or location, that's what you mean by that? Yes. I kind of look at them like inspiration. Uh -huh. It's these are a very, very, very small snapshot of what we have for any part of the collection. So if you're looking to get started in our collection on Massachusetts, this is just a few suggestions of where to start. So you have the research guides, um, biographical, and then it goes into cemeteries, etc. So there's a lot of information in here that maybe you didn't think of, oh, they might have vital records for all of these towns. This is amazing. This would be an amazing resource if your family's from Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that people realize that there's different types of records available within our genealogy center. So that's why we do have these pathfinders or snapshots into the collection. And we have one for every single state. And we do break down Indiana a little bit just because that's where we're physically located. So we're in Fort Wayne, Indiana, which is kind of just northeast Indiana. Um, we're not too far from Chicago. We're not too far from Indianapolis. We're not too far from Detroit. But um, it is a smaller city. Um, but we do have so many pieces of materials that you can't find anywhere else. And just to give you an idea, we do have subject snapshots. So if you're getting started in any of these subjects or international. So this is where you can see what we have for other locations across the world. Great. So this sounds like a really great place to start just to get a, a quick orientation to what might be out there and accessible through the website. Right. And just a reminder, this is a very, very small look. So not um, comprehensive. <laughs> exactly. If I were to go out there, I would grab a cart and try to pull all the books for a certain county, and I probably wouldn't be able to fit them all in one cart. Wow. So if that gives you guys a visual. Mm -hmm. So we also, if I go back to the home page, I just click on the little logo or the home and it takes me back. If I go to our resources, this is the bread and butter of researching from home. Free databases. But free is my favorite four letter word. <laughs> So we have the Microtext catalog. We do have over 600,000 pieces of microfilm and fish in our collection. Um, but we also have something called the African American Gateway and the Native American Gateway. And these are two parts of the collection that we actively try to grow as much as we can. Um, so if you go to these gateways, you can find different pieces of information. So if I go to US states, I can click on a state. Let's go to Georgia for fun. And then we give you websites. So these are websites that you can go to from home to do research. Let's say you're getting started with African American research in Georgia. So this would be a great place to start. And then we have all the books in our collection that are specific to Georgia, African American research, general, and then counties alphabetical. A lot of this, it's really almost like a Cindy's list, it's compiling links to many other resources, which makes you guys a great starting point. Yes, and that's what we really want to be. African American research and Native American research are sometimes more difficult for people to get started in, and so mm -hmm. we really want to help people. We want to get them to the next step where they can find information. 
We are the home of the Midwest African American Genealogical Institute that is held every year. And it is an excellent opportunity for African American researchers to learn how to deep dive into their genealogy research. And I noticed back on your main page list, I even saw family Bibles there. And Allison, we did a whole show on the amazing family Bibles. I mentioned the Genealogy Center, but tell us a little bit more about this. Of course. So we actively collect scans from family Bibles from all over. Um, We don't want to keep them. So let me start there. If you have a family Bible and we understand that that is a cherished possession, all we would love to have in our collection is a scan of the pertinent pages for family history. And that's what these wonderful people have done in sending us these wonderful pictures. We have dates and names. So this is the type of information that we look for. And if this is your family, this is priceless. Now I noticed that you had them grouped by the surnames. And of course there might be other names connected to the family. Are these searchable in any way or do we need to just browse through, click the links and browse? They are searchable. So over here to the right hand side, you can search by surname, first name, and then go through the family Bibles. Excellent. We really now, tried to make it easy. Yeah. Now I'm guessing maybe some people have found some things even based on our show. How could they contribute scans of their Bible to you? Well, we have a section on our website donations. Excellent. So donations are not just monetary donations. We're also looking for research. This is what we would love to have. So if you already have information that's been scanned and can be put on our website, this is the best thing for researchers across the country and your family. We all have family that live in other locations. So it's really nice to be able to say, hey, I put great grandma's Bible on this website so you can look at it at any time when you want to. Fantastic. So that family Bible page is wonderful. And we also have related to that family resources. So when people are writing their family histories, a lot of times they think, oh my goodness, I have to get this published. It's self-published. And sometimes that can cost a lot or they'll take it to maybe like a Kinko's and get it bound. And all of those are perfectly acceptable ways. But another way to share it with more people is to send us a copy, a digital copy, and we can put it on our website. And we do make sure that it is attributed to the author. It is under copyright. It does go into our catalog. So this is something that if it was physically here, someone in say California may not have access to, but since it's online, they do. So we love making things accessible. So folks are donating these to you as well. Are you guys doing some of your own digitization? Every day we're doing our own digitization. Many times people donate um, their family collections to us. Sometimes they put it in their will or how they want their estate broken up. They'll have their uh, research sent to us and that can be digitized. We've been digitizing um, family association records. So you can find a lot of that information as well. And We've been digitizing when people come in and they say, hey, I have this amazing collection of my family materials, but I want to keep it because it's precious to me. Would you want to digitize it so my family members can research it? And that's what we do. Wonderful. Now, we do understand that a lot of people are not local, so that's a little bit more difficult, which is why we have the option for you to scan and just send us the digital files. Right. So that would be under donations. And you've been showing us through our resources and free databases, correct? Correct. And these free databases are fantastic. There's so much in here and I don't want to take up too much more time with all of them, but you can see that there's specific location resources. So those would be like cemeteries or um, perhaps collections of obituaries or going home programs. So other states. Um, But I did want to note our military heritage, 
we are actively collecting military information from any war or peacetime. <laughs> so you can find things that perhaps are a little bit more difficult. As we all know, there was a fire at the National Archives in St. Louis. So finding discharge papers for World War I, World War II is so difficult. So you can find a lot of really cool stuff in here. So there's unit histories and rosters. Um, there's videos in here, there's photographs. And in fact, I'll throw this in, my grandfather's. <laughs> I brought my own collection in because there's so many pictures of other men that I don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. And I would love it if somebody went through this and was like, oh my gosh, that's my grandpa. Or Absolutely. that's my uncle or that's somebody in my family and then we'd be able to identify them that that's my dream on having this on this website well that's a great motivation for somebody to donate theirs to you because you have so much traffic going through your website i mean that's a really great opportunity to have somebody else connect exactly and the letters the letters are just amazing I cannot even begin to talk about how adorable these letters are. Dear mother and dad, I love the different ways people address their loved ones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Unique to each family. Exactly. So there's a lot of really cool information in all of these. So I have a little, I have a little bit of love for the, our military heritage. And so I really wanted to show how amazing that part is. Allison, I know some folks are probably thinking, oh my gosh, what if I could find something like that that matches my family? Would you take a moment and let us know how are we allowed to use materials that we find? And you know, people might wonder, well, can I screenshot that? Can I download that? What are some of the things that we need to keep in mind in terms of copyright and usage? Sure, of course. So with the materials that are on our website, they are under copyright. So the thing that you'll note is if I click into any of these, you're only going to get one page at a time. Mm -hmm. And that's so you can't just download the entire collection and capture it. Um, so it's very similar to being at the library. If you were to take a book that's under copyright and photocopy the entire thing, while that's against copyright and I don't recommend it, we can't really stop you. So it's kind of similar if you're looking at the letters online and we do give you a printer friendly view. So this oh, is nice. something that you can take a look at and print or print a PDF or save. And of course, people should be citing their source and citing yes. the Allen County Public Library as the source for anything that they use in terms of their own research. Precisely. And if the donor name is attached to it, I highly recommend including that as well. Excellent. So something that I will note, um, these free databases you can access from anywhere in the Milky Way galaxy. You do not have to be in Indiana. You do not have to be in Allen County. You don't even have to be in our library to access these. Fantastic, because sometimes when we hear about a library having databases, you do. You have to be there, right, or you have to have a library card, but that's not the case with these? Not at all, and there's oh. millions of images that we've digitized within this collection millions. So I highly recommend taking a look. And we do have a community album. A lot of times this is a little bit um, local centric, but we do have things like the Lincoln Library photographs, which could be of interest. And then there are historic photos from all over. Oh, great. So you can definitely take a look in here and see if that there's something of interest. Now, we're seeing a search field on that page. We're seeing a search field on some of the other pages as well. Can you give us some tips on when we see that, how we would use that? And would we expect if we do a Google search, let's say we have a the Dupre, is it Dupre, your, the name in your family? Dupre. So if we were to search on that in Google, let's say, and you guys have something, is your content likely to pop up as one of the results or do we really need to go straight to your site and then search within? It does come up in Google a lot of times, but since we did get a new website, um, it has slowed down the oh. finding of it a little bit. Um, as you know, when you change technology, there's sometimes a little catching up period and we're in that catching up period. We'll sure. get there, but you can try Google 
And then the other thing is, is you can also search our free databases as a whole. You don't have to go to each individual one. The one thing I will say is you don't want to use common words if you don't have to. So that includes first names. Okay. So if you're searching our free databases, it's better to search by a surname. That can be a little bit difficult if you have a surname like Smith, you'll get a lot of results. Do we have any control in your search engine on your site in terms of like search operators? Can we put quotation marks around keywords or phrases or is it just strictly keyword search? You can. You can put quotations around it and um, see what type of results you get. I don't always like to do that because sometimes it'll be like Smith comma William and sometimes it'll be William Smith or William B. Right. Smith and then it's all gets a little bit confusing but if you search all of those different ways that actually can be a way to help. Another thing you can do is search the surname and just scroll through till you find the lo location where your family member lives. So I'm going through all the Indiana stuff very quickly. Mm -hmm. Okay so let's say this person's from Illinois. Well then I can say okay, they are in Perry County. There's two cemeteries. Maybe they're buried there. And then click on that and see if that's the right person. Right. And, you know, one of my favorite things to do, and, and that's a great example, when you run a search, you've got a pretty long list. We can do the, what, control F on our computer. I know on a PC, I think it's command F on a Mac. And you could type in Illinois, and then it would just jump to that spot on that really long list even faster. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, fantastic. So we don't have to worry that there's a lot of content there because there's different ways to get to it. And that's a wonderful tip. Anybody who's out there researching, if you have a lot of material, that control uh, for the command, uh, use it. It's your best friend. Wonderful. All right. So what else should we be uh, keeping our eyes out for here? So just a reminder, the on-site databases do mean that you have to be physically on-site. You do have to be here. So unfortunately, um, these I won't go into just because I wouldn't recommend clicking in there and being disappointed <laughs> if you don't have access. But I no, will just bring up, a, I'm curious, um, with particularly with this year, you guys have been shut down for probably at some point, and then you have people on staff, and then uh, I don't know if you're letting folks in the library right now, but when somebody is off-site, uh, could they dig through there and put in a request or do a chat or do a lookup? What are some of those kinds of options? So, yes, um, we are here. We are open to the public. Oh, great. If you go to the genealogy community and ask a genealogy librarian, you can send us a message very easily and let's say there's a specific book and you know that your family member's in there and you would like more information on it or there's a specific page, shoot us a message. We'll see what we can do. Um, if it's a lot of research, that's probably a little bit out of what we can do, um, but we can do quick things pretty easily like check the index page or table of contents for something if you're trying to determine if this book is the one that you need. Exactly. And we will bend over backwards trying to figure out if there's a copy closer to you or if it's been digitized. We want you to have access. If we're the only ones who have it, we'll see what we can do. It's just sometimes our hands are tied because of copyright and because of logistics. So it's just one of those things. We really want everyone to be successful, but it doesn't hurt to ask what's the worst we can say. I totally agree. <laughs> so another thing to note is that we also have family history archives. And by that, I mean, we have a scanning station for family search in our basement and there's also a scanning station for internet archive and they are both actively scanning our books and our collection that are out of copyright. So, so is I, that getting that content onto their website as well as your site? Is that the kind of partnership? Yes. So what happens is it'll go onto their website and I can just click on Allen County. So this shows how many books that they have digitized from the Allen County Public Library to date. So it looks like there's a little over 30,000. Um, and obviously that shut down for a wee bit because <laughs> of the pandemic, but um, 
There's a lot of great material in here and these are public access so you can flip through them and take a look at what the materials are and hopefully get some great information. So Allison, you said you have a scanning station so FamilySearch can come in, they scan it. Mm -hmm. uh, are they doing the sole hosting? So you're just linking over to their site or are you guys both hosting that digital content? They are hosting it and we link over to it. it helps you both. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's a fantastic relationship. We love working with them. We love working with Internet Archive. And they've been doing a fantastic job of getting our materials online. Um, so Internet Archive has over 110,000 materials of ours that have been put online. And you can see some of these are old and it looks like Virginia, that's of interest. It looks like there's some specific family histories. So yeah. it helps to look through here. So these are huge collections hosted on other free sites, but that wonderful uh, button you took us through from your website is the portal. I love mm -hmm. it. The Family History Archives. Family History Archives. And we do uh, link to We Relate because a lot of people were putting information on Re We Relate. Um, we do have a link to FamilySearch.org because that is a very heavily researched website. And Linkpendium. Um, there's a lot of different links in there, a lot of different histories that you can get your hands on as well for free. So this is kind of our free research page. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now tell folks, if they're not familiar with Link Pendium, it probably isn't as well known in the genealogy community. Tell us a little bit about what that is. I would compare it to Cindy's List, actually. Okay. Um, it's, it's very similar. If you scroll down, you can see that there's a genealogy links page. So you can just click on a location. So let's go with Oklahoma. And how about Beaver County? So it tells you what sort of projects are happening and if there's biographies, oral histories, etc. So it just gives you ideas of where these pieces of information are located and it tells you if it's a paid website. Excellent. So there'll be many links there as well to your content or? There is some links to our content which is why we have that on our website. Okay. So this is a lot of great information, but another thing to note is if something has been digitized and it is in our catalog, if you find it in our catalog, it will tell you. Um, one thing to note, if you're looking in our catalog, you don't want to use common words like county, city, and you don't want to use plural. So instead of directories, you want to use directory. Good it's to know. A weird little nuance, but it's always helpful. Well, every, you know, search engine, every website does it a little different. Exactly. And then the next thing that you want to do is come over to branch because we're on the same system as the rest of the library. So we don't want stuff from the other branches or even Maine. We want genealogy. And once we do that, this information is just a click away. So if it's digitized, it'll be under more info. And you scroll down and it'll have if it's been digitized over here at the bottom. Will there so be another category of digitized? Because I saw their catalog. Um, it actually is just in the catalog because it's we have the physical book as well. Hmm. We have a lot of city directories as well. Um, we have the largest collection of city directories in the country. And here is Kurt Witcher, the manager of the Genealogy Center with more on city directories. Among the largest collections we have in the Genealogy Center is our collection of city directories. These, for many cities, are like annual enumerations. We know that census records are gathered every 10 years. City directories may be gathered for any given city every single year. We have tens of thousands of city directories from across the United States, North America, and a few foreign countries. So in addition to the books that we have, we also have tens of thousands of rolls of microfilm where you can find books from older periods, the 1800s and early 1900s, on microfilm. These census records uh, are a great complement to our city directory collection. So that's why we have so many city directories. We know how important census records are to our research. So these city directories are like a mini census. 
So when you're looking for your family, your family stories, trying to put people in a place at a time, remember our city directories, both in book form and on microtext. You'll find a lot of great information in these city directories. We'll be back with more on the Genealogy Center website with Allison Singleton right after this. Today's episode is sponsored by MyHeritage, a global discovery platform enjoyed by 110 million people worldwide. MyHeritage has it all and offers a full-service experience that bridges your past, present, and future. MyHeritage has developed powerful genealogy tools to enrich your family tree and take your research to the next level. Receive automatic matches to family trees of fellow MyHeritage users and historical records, which provide new details that you can add to your tree. Explore 12 billion historical records to uncover fascinating new insights about your ancestors. Add new information to your family tree in one click. Check your tree for inaccuracies, colorize your black and white photos, and connect with relatives around the globe. MyHeritage makes it all possible and puts the discoveries at your fingertips. I've been colorizing some of my own personal family photos, and not only are they beautiful, but in many of the photos, it's actually been revealing more detail so I can see more of my family history. Growing your family tree is easier than ever before with MyHeritage. The discoveries are out there and waiting to be made. Visit MyHeritage.com and try it today. That's MyHeritage.com. How about compiled family histories? Do you have much in the way of that? We have loads. So what's a family surname? Uh, How about Moore, M-O-O-R-E? I'm going to put the word family after. Okay. And then I'm going to select what comes up here. Now, again, you have to Uh, the branch genealogy. Otherwise, it's going to come up with all sorts of novels that you have no interest in. Right. So it looks like there's lots of materials on more family. So we can click on, how about this one? Oh, that's fascinating. That's and this fun. is actually on microfilm. This is a pretty early history. This is of a family of a man who was born in 1743. Wow. And North Carol- my Moors are out of North Carolina, so <laughs> I may have to come back to this. Yeah, so this is actually on microfilm or fiche, so um, we would be able to pull this and put it on a reader and take a look. Well, great. So So lots of compiled histories, it sounds like. Oh, there's loads. We have an entire room dedicated around, I think it's around 70,000. Wow, that's amazing. And those, those are just our physical books. That's not counting the family histories that have been put on our website. And here's Kurt Witcher, manager of the Genealogy Center, with more on compiled family histories. So in a genealogy center, you would expect that we would have many genealogies, as in family histories. And indeed we do. We have about 70,000 plus family histories, compilations that are written on a particular family. In this case, it's the Thinner family. You can find any of our genealogies, any of our family histories, by looking in the online catalog under the surname you're interested in, and the word family. Some of these are very richly illustrated and very nicely compiled, and some of them are really very, very brief. You kind of get what the person has put together. But we have found, because we have so many of them, that they provide great research clues for family historians and people looking to find their family stories. So here on the website and working from home, Anything else we should absolutely not miss at Allen County? Well, one thing is, is to make sure to contact us because the biggest thing that researchers get frustrated with is having trouble navigating a new website, having trouble navigating a new um, catalog system. And we understand that we have both right now. And we don't want you to be frustrated. We truly want you to find the material that you're looking for. And so please contact us. We want you to be successful. And another thing to note is that we do offer consultations. We offer free 30 minute consultations to anyone anywhere. So how do they reach out to you for that? Just shoot us an email. Under our services, great. Phone number, email, everything we need. 
Exactly, and we're happy to do it uh, virtually via Zoom, by phone, by email, or in person, depending on what you are capable of doing. Do you have professional genealogists? Um, if somebody were to contact you and say, I would like a little more extensive, maybe I have an hour or two's worth of work and lookups, can't come in person, can you help connect them with somebody who they may be able to hire for a short period? Definitely. So the first option is, is we do have a research form. We do have research services here at the Genealogy Center. And so you can pay to have someone here do the research. And then another option is, is we do have a list of professional researchers that have requested to be on that list. And we are happy to send that out to anybody who would like that list. Um, you do have to request it because it is updated quite frequently. So we don't want it to go on the website and be old within a few days. <laughs> right, right. So shoot us an email and we're happy to send that and this research services, but you can also find it on our website. And you can also find where you can get article fulfillment for Percy. We are the home institution for the periodical source index. Great. Tell folks a little bit more about that because that is a wonderful resource. And actually, you know what? I'm going to sneak back over to an on-site database and I'm going to tell you guys a secret. This secret is if you go to on-site databases, I know I told you not to play in there, but if you <laughs> go down, just don't look at the other stuff, but if you go down to the periodical source index, this is the index for genealogy and local history periodicals or newsletters, journals, whatever you may find. And these are for small little locations or large ones. And then click on it. Now this is hosted by Find My Past. So some of the capabilities of this are under a paywall, but you can still search it, search the index for free from home. And you can still click this and get to this page and search. You're just not going to be able to get all of the information. Um, so for example, if you have a subscription to Find My Past, some of these have been digitized and you would have access to that. Or it would give you more information about how many times the search term is mentioned within the article. Excellent. But you can find some gems in here that you cannot find anywhere else. So I'll have a link in the show notes for this episode so everybody can check this out. And if I'm not mistaken, they have a little more flexibility on how you can pay for access. I don't think you even have to necessarily do a whole year. Right. Give us a little, just a little example. You were talking about some of these are kind of very small niche things. What would be an example of something that someone should go out there and try to find? Duo Defiance Ohio and Probate. So one of the things that I don't do is put a who. And the reason I don't put a who is because these are indexed by the title. And most of us don't have family members that are named in articles in the title. They're named within the body of the article. So you don't want necessarily want to do that because that will restrict your search quite a bit. And sometimes you don't even yeah, you don't even want to do a keyword because maybe probate isn't in the title. Maybe it's another word. So uh -huh. I put probate in and I got seven hits. And I could say, okay, maybe this is what I need. And also when you're at home, this is all the information you're going to get. You're going to get the article title, the periodical title, and the year. If you try to click on any of the things over here, you will then be taken to the paywall. But this would be a way to kind of compile a hit list of things that you want to research and you could do some of that legwork before you actually pay for access for a certain amount of time so you can really get the most out of the time you're, you have that access. Exactly. And also yeah. you can order the articles from us. Um, it's oh. reasonably priced, um, $7.50. Let me pull up the order form. Oh, so maybe if there's just one or two articles, it might be better to go to you and uh, do it that way. Exactly. So if it's something that is really helpful, and sometimes we'll actually pull an article and see if your family member is in there, if it's indexed. Okay. So it's reasonably priced. You can go in here and you can see that it's seven fifty dollars for each order form. So this is six articles for seven fifty. dollars Oh, great. 
So periodicals, would this be, for example, um, an ongoing newsletter out of a long-term genealogical society? What are the kinds of um, periodicals we'll be looking for? So it's a little bit of everything. So um, for example, there's a small county in Indiana where my family's from. And there was a couple that was putting together a genealogy newsletter. And it came out once a month and they were self-publishing it. They were printing it in their living room and it was stapled together. It was just <laughs> very rudimentary, but it was full of information from that county. And they were very invested um, as long as they were able to keep it going. Unfortunately, they weren't at a certain point, but the information in there is priceless. And that's the type of thing you can find in here with little gems. But bigger gems that you can find as well is you have the statewide organization. So historical societies, genealogical societies, um, the larger genealogical societies, so like NGS, you can also find um, just kind of the niche little periodicals as well. So maybe oh, yeah. it's about railroad specific, maybe it's about military specific, and you can find those as well, which can be exactly what you're looking for with your family. Wow, that sounds perfect for a brick wall where you just kind of have hit all the low fruit and you really need to dig in there and, and find something that's a little more unique. Like you said, maybe something that somebody produced themselves. Wonderful. So we can use Percy to identify potential items, contact uh, the Genealogy Center, or access through a subscription with Find My Past. So lastly, I just want to make sure that you know that if you go to our website and scroll down, not only do you have our contact information and our hours of service, you have our events, and all of these are virtual. We have two programs a week at least. We have a special one on a Saturday, and you can join us at any time. Again, the resources, the Genealogy Center at Allen County Public Library. And Allison Singleton, I thank you so much for a personalized tour here on the show. We really appreciate it. I think you'll be hearing from a lot more <laughs> genealogists who are excited about the resources that you offer. Thank you so much. Thank you. This has been delightful. Thanks so much for joining me for this Genealogy Gems podcast episode number... 251. You'll find the show notes at genealogygems.com. Just head to podcasts in the menu and click on the Genealogy Gems podcast. You'll also find another free podcast there. Now that's called the Family History Genealogy Made Easy podcast. Now that one I produced several years ago, but it's a really nice kind of refresher course on good genealogical practices with a lot of great interviews, including Kurt Witcher, the manager from the Allen County Public Library Genealogy Center. I'll have a link in the show notes for this episode that will take you over to that specific episode. It's well worth a listen. He covers the non-population census enumerations, and these are not to be missed, even though they're a little bit more challenging to work with. There's a lot of really wonderful information there that can help you in your genealogy research. And of course, if you want to see the website in action, uh, you can watch my conversation with Allison over at Elevens is with Lisa. That's our weekly show. The show comes out every Thursday at the Genealogy Gems YouTube channel. We will have the show notes page over at genealogygems.com. You can click Elevens is in the menu. And uh, those are available for a period of time for free. And then it becomes available exclusively for our Genealogy Gems premium members. I hope you're a premium member. We have so much to offer you all year long to help you become a better genealogist and have more success in your daily research. There are countless videos and a wide range of topics within genealogy, as well as a premium podcast. If you're enjoying this podcast, the premium podcast is exclusively for Genealogy Gems premium members and comes with your yearly membership. You'll also get our downloadable kind of cheat sheet show notes handouts for every episode of Levens is with Lisa. Those are super convenient. No ads in them. They are searchable PDF and really laid out to help you in your daily research. 
So uh, check it out, genealogygems.com. And when you head over to the YouTube channel, click subscribe. That will kind of toss our channel into your favorites list. And uh, sometimes we do some last minute premieres there over on the channel. So be sure and click that bell notification after you click subscribe. So you'll get those notifications when we do have special announcements over there on the YouTube channel. Well, that's it for this episode. Thank you for listening, my friend. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.